Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing some of the surface anatomy of the human heart. So we're first going to take a look at an anterior view right here, and then we'll take a look at a next slide on a posterior view. And then in the next video, we'll be discussing the coronary circulation. We'll describe what that is. And then after that, we'll look at some of the interior or internal anatomy of the heart once we peel off the surface right here. So first of all, let's get oriented with the view of the heart. So this is an anterior view of the heart. This is the anterior surface. So if this is anterior, that makes this side over here the patient's left. This is the left side of the heart. And over here, this would be the patient's right side of the heart. Down here on the right side of the image, now of course this is closer to the patient's left side, but on the right side of the image, we have this region where the heart points. It sort of points inferiorly and then toward the right on the image. It really points inferiorly and toward the patient's left. This point right here is called the apex of the heart. And you'll notice that the apex is actually on the bottom. When we think of an apex, we usually think it's superior, not inferior. But in the case of the heart, the apex is actually down here, inferiorly and pointing toward the patient's left. All this stuff up here really is where the base of the heart is. So these are what we call the great vessels. And the great vessels are really all either coming into or originating from the base of the heart. So base is superior, the apex is inferior, and pointing toward the patient's left, as you can see right here. All right. Now before we go any further, I want to mention that the heart has four chambers. We'll be talking about those chambers in a future video when we look at the internal anatomy and the flow of blood through the heart. The two chambers are the left atrium and the right atrium, and then the left ventricle and the right ventricle. The atria, plural of atrium, the left and right atria, are going to be closer to the base and they're much smaller. And the two ventricles are going to be closer to the apex, they're more inferior, and they're going to be in this region right here. So when we talk about atria and ventricles, we're really talking about internal anatomy, but we can more or less say roughly where they would be. Okay? And the reason I bring that up is the next landmark. This groove right here, which goes vertically down the surface of the heart, this is called the anterior interventricular sulcus. It's anterior, because it's on the anterior surface of the heart. It's a sulcus because it's a groove, and then it separates the two ventricles. It's an interventricular sulcus. So when we look at this sulcus right here, it's going to separate this region. Deep to this would be where the left ventricle is. From this region over here, which is where the right ventricle is. Now just a word of caution here. Uh, this heart is actually rotated a little bit, so it appears that the right side of the heart, the right ventricle, is much larger than the left ventricle. In reality, the left ventricle is a little bit bigger than the right. Um, it just appears that the right side is bigger because it's rotated. We'll look at a model in a few minutes, a three-dimensional model, and we'll actually see all these structures. But this is an important landmark, anterior interventricular sulcus. And on this side of it, the patient's left would be the left ventricle. Over here would be the right ventricle. If we go up here, where this large vein is going to be draining into the heart, we'll talk about that in a minute, this would be where the patient's right atrium would be. Over on this side would be where the patient's left atrium would be. Okay, So atria are on top, closer to the base. Ventricles are on bottom, closer to the apex of the heart. Okay. Now the major thing I wanted to cover in here are really the vessels uh, that are either coming into the heart or leaving the heart. The vessels that are coming into the heart are the veins. Okay? The vessels that are going away from the heart are the arteries. We're actually going to talk about the arteries first. The first artery is really just this large artery right here, which is called the aorta. You've probably heard of that before. The aorta actually takes blood and delivers it to the systemic circulation, and it takes that blood from the left ventricle. So the left ventricle is actually in this area, that deep to this, and it doesn't look like it, but the, the left ventricle actually pumps blood internally out through here and then out through the aorta. Okay? And the aorta has three different parts. It has a part that rises up. That's this region right here, which is the ascending aorta. And then it has an arch, okay? because it's going to ascend up, it's going to turn around, and then go inferiorly. 
Okay. This part right here that's on the arch is the arch of aorta or just aortic arch. And as the arch turns around and goes inferiorly, the aorta is going to span behind the heart so we can't see it, but when we get to this region down here we can actually see it emerging inferiorly from the posterior side of the heart, and this is called the descending aorta. Now, because this is all taking place in the thoracic cavity, uh, this is actually ca also called the thoracic aorta. Thoracic aorta is the part of the aorta that's descending while still in the thoracic cavity. Eventually this will descend further downward across the diaphragm into the abdominal cavity, in which case that part of the descending aorta will eventually be called the abdominal aorta. But the thoracic and abdominal aortas are really just the same structure, it's the descending aorta in two different locations. Hopefully that makes sense. Now a few things about the aorta. The ascending aorta has two branches and they're very small and we can't see them here. We'll be covering those in a future video, actually the next video. And those are the left and right coronary arteries. Okay? The left coronary artery would be emerging from it roughly right here and then the right one would be over on this side. Okay? The two coronary arteries are actually going to give off branches that supply the heart muscle itself. Okay? So the heart, particularly its muscular layer, its myocardium, requires a lot of blood, it requires oxygen, it requires nutrients in order to keep pumping your entire life. And so those two coronary arteries are really what are going to be supplying the heart tissue itself. Okay? We'll be covering the coronary circulation in the next video. But those two branches come from the ascending aorta. Then we have the arch of aorta, or aortic arch. There are three branches that come off of the arch of aorta. And in order, they are the brachiocephalic artery, which is this first one when viewed from an anterior position. The second one is the left common carotid artery. And the third one is the left subclavian artery. We'll be covering these branches uh, in more detail in another video. But it suffices to say that the brachiocephalic artery will then branch into a right common carotid artery and a right subclavian artery to match the two over here on the left side. But notice that coming directly off of the arch of aorta, we don't have a right common carotid artery or a right subclavian. We have a brachiocephalic artery that then will branch into a right common carotid and right subclavian artery. Okay? So the three branches coming off of the arch, brachiocephalic, left common carotid, and left subclavian. And then of course we have the descending aorta, and there are branches that come off of that. We'll be discussing those in a future video. Okay? There's a couple other arteries here. We also have the pulmonary arteries. Pulmonary arteries are blue because they actually pump deoxygenated blood to the lungs. But notice here we have the left pulmonary artery, which would go toward the left lung. And over here, we have the right pulmonary artery. It's already branched here, so there's actually two parts of it. But these are the right pulmonary arteries, or just the right pulmonary artery, which go toward the right lung, right? Also notice here, if we look carefully between the right pulmonary artery and the arch of the aorta, we have this ligament right here. This is called the ligamentum arteriosum. And this is actually a remnant of fetal development. There's actually originally a duct here that will actually connect the two structures. Uh, in adulthood, and really once the infant's born, it's actually solidified into a ligament. This is the ligamentum arteriosum right here. Okay. Now for the veins. Veins are going to be bringing blood back to the heart. And the first one we're going to talk about is this one right here, the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava is going to be delivering blood directly, and it's deoxygenated blood, directly back to the right atrium, which will be right in this region right here. Okay? The superior vena cava really collects blood uh, from two major sources, and those are the two brachiocephalic veins. This one over here is the left brachiocephalic vein, and this one that's a little more vertical is the right brachiocephalic vein. Okay? Notice that there are two brachiocephalic veins, a right and a left, but for the artery there's only one brachiocephalic artery, and it therefore does not require a left and a right when you're naming it. There's only one of them. Here's the right brachiocephalic vein, it's the left brachiocephalic vein. They bring blood directly back into the superior vena cava, which then brings it back into the right atrium, which is in this region over here. Down here we have the inferior vena cava, which delivers blood back upward, 
also to the right atrium. Okay? You could probably guess the superior vena cava will be delivering blood that's returning from the head, the neck, and the arms, really the superior structures, right? Whereas the inferior vena cava is going to be delivering blood back to the heart, any blood that's coming back from anything below the diaphragm. Okay, So if it's in the abdominal cavity, if it's the diaphragm itself, or anything below that, that's all going to be returning to the heart via the inferior vena cava ultimately. Okay. There's one other vein that we can't see here, but I want to mention it, that brings blood back to the right atrium of the heart, and that's the coronary sinus. I mentioned the coronary circulation where we have, coming off the ascending aorta, we'd actually have a left coronary artery and a right coronary artery. They ultimately bring blood to the tissue of the heart, but you have to be able to drain the tissue of the heart. And there's some veins we'll talk about in the next video, but ultimately all those veins drain into the coronary sinus, which then brings blood back to the right atrium. And so deoxygenated blood is brought back to the right atrium through three major vessels, the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and then the coronary sinus, which is ultimately draining that blood that's in the heart tissue itself. And then we also have pulmonary veins. There's multiple of these. Here's two right pulmonary veins, and then here's three left pulmonary veins. These are delivering oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the heart, and they're specifically bringing it to the left atrium. You can see here the left pulmonary veins, the three of them are already closer to the left atrium. The right pulmonary veins are going to traverse a little bit posteriorly before they're able to dump directly into the left atrium. Okay? But these are your pulmonary veins. All right, so this is an anterior view of the heart. Let's take a look at a posterior view. Okay? So first of all, let's get familiar with the directions. Okay? Here's the apex down here. Okay? Here's the base up here. And since we're looking at a posterior view, this is now the right side of the heart. And over here is the left side. All right. So again, over in this region right here, this would be the left atrium. Down here would be the left ventricle. Over here would be where the right atrium is. And then over here would be where the right ventricle is. Okay. Now again, we can see here, this is actually the ascending aorta, a little bit of that right here. And then of course we can see the arch of aorta. All right? But we're looking at it in the reverse direction. So the first artery that comes off of the arch of aorta is the brachiocephalic artery. But it's on the opposite side here in the picture. Because remember, brachiocephalic artery is always the first one that branches off of the aorta. That is the arch. Second one is left common carotid artery, and the third is always left subclavian artery. And then here is your descending aorta. This, of course, would be the thoracic aorta. And then once it crosses the diaphragm and goes into the abdominal cavity, it would become the abdominal aorta. All right, here's your superior vena cava delivering blood back to the right atrium of the heart. Down here is the inferior vena cava, also delivering blood back to the right atrium of the heart. And then you can also see here the two brachiocephalic veins. Here's the left brachiocephalic vein, right brachiocephalic vein. Both of these veins converging into the superior vena cava. This vessel right here is called the arch of azygous. Um, this is part of the azygous system, which is really kind of an alternate system for bringing blood uh, back to the heart. Um, parts of the azygous system can deliver blood to the inferior vena cava, and then most of that blood is going to return via this arch of azygous, which dumps into the superior vena cava. Kind of in this region right here, you'd have more or less where the pulmonary trunk is, and then the pulmonary trunk is going to diverge into pulmonary arteries. Here's the left pulmonary artery, which is taking deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. And then these are right pulmonary arteries, which are going to the right lung, also taking deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the right lung. And then over here, you can see the pulmonary veins. They're going to be delivering oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the left atrium, which is right in this area. Here's three left pulmonary veins, and then here's two right pulmonary veins, which are going to penetrate through here, and they're going to ultimately dump again into that left atrium. Okay? So now that we've taken a look at this anterior and posterior view on paper, let's go and look at a three-dimensional model, and we'll fill in some additional structures that we can see. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.